personnel may encounter many types of aircraft and must be familiar with the types, construction, and operation of any aircraft they encounter, including cargo and freighter aircraft. <laughs> ARF apparatus should carry basic aircraft emergency information. Air carriers and aircraft manufacturers provide information about the aircraft. Military tech manuals have pre-plans for military and many civilian aircraft. Commercial materials are available. Software can be used in apparatus-mounted computers during aircraft emergencies. Other fire departments can provide information. The RF Working Group, the American Association of Airport Executives, and the Airport News and Television Network offer information and training. At some major hubs, airline recurrent training facilities have mock-ups of the common doors, hatches, and other egress systems. Work with air carriers and fixed base operators to schedule aircraft familiarization training. Become familiar with unique aircraft. Many airports have maintenance facilities with disassembled aircraft. Excellent resources for studying construction and systems. Aeronautical schools typically offer a wide variety of aircraft and training materials. Fixed base operators and other businesses have information and access to helicopters and general aviation aircraft. Cargo aircraft may be accessed prior to loading operations. In an emergency, you may encounter almost any type of aircraft. Identifying aircraft types and typical features will improve your response. Most GA aircraft are constructed of lightweight metal and carry one to six passengers. Most are not pressurized, which means that the doors and hatches are lightweight and easy to operate or force open. Business aircraft have a wide variety of occupant loads and interior arrangements. They are typically pressurized with plug-type doors and hatches. Pressurized aircraft are rigidly constructed and harder to access. Most commuter aircraft have a pilot, co-pilot, and sometimes one flight attendant with 12 to 30 passengers. Access and cargo doors are usually on the left side, Nearly all are pressurized. Cramped interiors present a difficult environment for emergency response. Narrow-body air carrier aircraft are the most common type on major airports. They carry 30 to 200 passengers. Crews consist of two to three officers and up to five flight attendants. Wide-body air carrier aircraft hold in excess of 500 passengers and two to four engines. Crew consists of two or three officers and 10 or more flight attendants. Any aircraft can carry cargo. Larger cargo aircraft are predominantly jet-powered. Some older gasoline or turboprop freighters may be encountered. Small single and twin-engine aircraft, called feeders, are also common. Helicopters are not as rigidly constructed as fixed-wing aircraft and tend to break up on impact. Rotary wing aircraft fuel tanks are found in various locations, often under the seats or in the aircraft belly. Other types of aircraft present unique situations and may not fit into any of the normal categories. Expect the unexpected. Unusual aircraft not normally served by your airport may land in an emergency. Some aircraft require special consideration due to their unique functions and designs. Military aircraft include combat, cargo, fueling, reconnaissance aircraft, helicopters, and military versions of civilian aircraft. Military aircraft can have all the features, systems, and hazards encountered on civilian aircraft, as well as unique hazards. Note that F-16 responses should always wear SCBA because of the presence of hydrazine in the APU. Canopies are usually constructed of heavy plastic material. They can be cut by rescue saws. Attempt this very dangerous operation only when necessary. Normal and emergency canopy controls are usually identified and located on the left side of the aircraft. If normal access is unavailable, a T-handle on a long lanyard may be available for jettison. Clear the area of personnel and apparatus. Pull the T-handle from as far away as possible and immediately move to safety. The canopy will forcefully blow upward and can fall anywhere around the aircraft. Ejection systems are varied and firefighters should be familiar with the types of aircraft that use their airports. 
always approach a military aircraft as if it's armed. Weaponry includes cannons, missiles, bombs, and pyrotechnics. Even dummy training weapons can be dangerous. Exposed to fire, weapons can cook off immediately or within eight minutes. They can become unstable when exposed to heat and can detonate from the force of a hose stream. Missiles and guns usually fire forward. Rocket blast releases rearward. Familiarity with aircraft construction materials such as aluminum, fabric, steel, plastic, fiberglass, and carbon fiber composite will optimize your ability to respond to incidents. Most aircraft are constructed of aluminum alloys. After 90 to 120 seconds of direct fire impingement, aluminum will melt. Aluminum will not spark and can be cut with a rescue saw. Cool all rotary saw blades and surfaces being cut with a water spray during long cutting operations, such as making an opening for entry. This helps prevent aluminum from melting and fouling the cutting surface. Rivets may be made of steel or ferrous metals and can cause a spark. Although many aircraft now use ceramic aluminum alloys in landing gear components, magnesium and titanium are still present on some aircraft. Both are combustible metals, difficult to extinguish and releasing toxic products of combustion. Specialized extinguishing agents are available. Another tactic is protecting exposure and letting metal burn out on its own. Magnesium can be buried in dry, inert materials such as sand, absorbents, and powdered cement until burning out. Composite materials are common on aircraft, especially new models. When torn or burned, composites can release sharp fibers. Composite materials can create respiratory or skin irritation hazards. Control composite fibers by quickly extinguishing post-crash fires and wetting the incident scene with foam or water. A water and wax solution can adhere fibers to aircraft wreckage. Individual ARF units should familiarize themselves with this procedure. When composites are present, firefighters should use respiratory protection. There are three basic types of aircraft engines, reciprocating, turboprop, and jet. Reciprocating engines are generally limited to GA aircraft. Firefighters should be familiar with the aircraft types at their airports. Helicopters use reciprocating or turbine engines. Tail rotors are especially dangerous. Main rotors may droop as they slow. Always approach a helicopter as low as possible in view of and as directed by the pilot. Never approach from the rear. There are two types of jet engines. Older aircraft use turbojet engines, while newer aircraft use bypass turbofan engines. Jet engine intakes and exhaust areas are hazardous. People and vehicles have been blown around by jet blast. People and objects can be sucked into jet engines with tragic results. If an aircraft's top and bottom red rotating beacons are on, the engines are likely running. Stay at least 25 feet away from jet intakes and at least two aircraft lengths behind operating engines. Keep vehicle windows closed facing and operating jet engines. You may encounter several types of jet engine emergencies. Hot starts, wet starts, and tail cone fires happen when excess fuel accumulates in the engine's tail cone and ignites upon startup. Smoke and fire may be visible, and a hot start may be reported as an aircraft on fire. Pilots typically handle a hot start without requesting response. If they request response, the fire may need extinguishing by discharging agent into the tail cone. Fires may also start in jet engine accessory sections. If the aircraft's onboard fire extinguishing system cannot control the fire, firefighters must discharge agent through engine access openings or open the engine housing. An uncontained engine failure refers to disintegration of the engine, which is usually in flight or at takeoff. Engine parts may penetrate the fuselage and wing surfaces, seriously injuring aircraft occupants, starting interior fires, and damaging vital flight systems. In this situation, the engine will usually be a total loss. You can use an extinguishing agent to control the emergency. There is no universal agreement on the best extinguishing agent for engine fires. Approved halogenated agents, such as Halon 1211 or Halotron 1, will cause minimal damage to the engine and may not necessitate an engine overhaul. Most engines of all types can be shut down on the flight deck by pulling the throttles back to idle and activating fuel cutoff switches. Turboprop and jet engines will also have engine fire handles on the flight deck. Pulling these handles will shut down the engines by disconnecting all engine systems. 
Rotating the handles right or left, or pushing a button or switch will discharge extinguishing agent into the accessory compartment. Engine thrust reversers can activate and pose a hazard to ARF personnel. Most aircraft will have a method to deactivate thrust reversers or release hydraulic pressure in the system. There are two types of aircraft fuel, aviation gasoline, or avgas, and jet fuel. Avgas is highly volatile and always ready to burn. Jet fuels in general have higher flash points and slower flame spread rates than avgas. Aircraft fuel capacities come in a wide range, up to more than 50,000 gallons. Both fuels burn with the same intensity and present the same conditions when on fire. They float on water. They are toxic, causing skin irritation and respiratory problems. They require decontamination measures after contact. Fuel is usually stored in the wings. The exterior wing surface is commonly part of a wet wing or integral fuel cell. Fuel tanks may also be located in the belly, wing tips, tail, and under aircraft fuel pods in military aircraft. Fuel lines are made of metal, rubber, or other materials and have red markings. Anticipate fuel lines inside aircraft with rear engines or APUs in the tail. Pressurized aircraft will have gaseous oxygen systems. Military aircraft may also have liquid oxygen systems. Oxygen cylinders and systems are usually in the aircraft's belly. Oxygen piping has green bands and oxygen systems may have shutoff valves. Oxygen can significantly accelerate existing fires and burst into flame upon contact with petroleum residues such as pavement grease and oil. Liquid oxygen can also cause serious skin burns. Liquid oxygen leaks should be sprayed with a water fog to create a seal of ice. Most aircraft have hydraulic systems. Hydraulic systems run throughout the aircraft at pressures of up to 3,000 psi. Hydraulic piping has blue and yellow markings. Small leaks may be difficult to detect and can easily injure and contaminate ARF personnel. If exposed, flush eyes immediately with water at least 15 minutes. Aircraft electrical systems present ignition and shock hazards. You may encounter several different types of electrical systems on the same aircraft. Almost all large aircraft use Nikon batteries. Large aircraft batteries have a wheel or T-handle that will disconnect the batteries. Other aircraft may require battery pliers. Disconnecting batteries will disable aircraft fire protection and extinguishing systems. Helicopters, GA aircraft, and commuter and military aircraft may have batteries almost anywhere. The auxiliary power unit, or APU, is a small jet engine used to generate electrical power on a large aircraft. Procedures for engine fires generally apply to APUs. APU shutdown and fire extinguishing controls can be found on the flight deck and aircraft exterior, usually on the nose gear, aircraft belly, or wheel well. Tires, wheels, and landing gear can be extremely dangerous during emergency conditions. Tires can explode, overheat, or become damaged, and brakes can be extremely hot. Expect hot brakes on aircraft aborting takeoffs or when thrust reversers and control surfaces malfunction. If grease or tires catch fire, cool with water and extinguish. Most aircraft wheels are made of aluminum. Wheels can fracture under certain conditions. If the tire is still inflated, pressure can throw a wheel shrapnel to the sides. Only approach wheels from the front or rear of the aircraft. Older models or military aircraft may use magnesium. Magnesium wheels present the biggest danger of fracturing and throwing shrapnel to the side. Most large aircraft wheels have fusible plug and pressure devices that deflate the tire at high temperatures and pressures. ARF personnel must know how to access aircraft interiors. Doors are designated left or right and numbered sequentially from nose to tail. Passengers board and deplane most narrow-bodied aircraft through door one left or L1. ARF personnel should select the most appropriate entry doors to prevent fire from spreading. Non-pressurized light aircraft doors are similar to vehicle doors. They generally swing forward and may incorporate multiple latching devices. Always try before prying. Commuter and business aircraft have many types of doors. Often, one door services the entire aircraft. They are usually pressurized and can open in multiple ways. Large aircraft may be pressurized during access operations. Do not attempt to open a door that is still pressurized. Some newer aircraft have warning systems on the door, indicating the aircraft is pressurized. 
If doors are difficult or impossible to open, assume the aircraft is pressurized and open the outflow valve with a pick-headed axe or a pike head to release the pressure. Outflow valves are usually located at the rear of the fuselage. Commuter and business aircraft may include wing exit hatches. These small hatches will usually not accommodate rescue personnel in breathing apparatus. They may be locked or inoperable from the outside. Commercial and military aircraft usually include opening instructions outside each door. Complexity and lack of standardization can complicate rescue efforts. The most common pressurized cabin door is the plug type. Most plug type doors open and swing forward. Other large frame commercial aircraft may have vault type doors with pins locking into the door frame. Narrow body aircraft doors are plug and vault type and operate identically on both sides of the fuselage. Left side doors are designated as normal entry doors while service doors are on the right side. Almost all doors open and swing forward and lock into the fuselage with a gust lock. Narrow body passenger aircraft doors can carry escape slides, which inflate manually or automatically when opening the door. Escape slides on narrow body aircraft usually cannot be disarmed from outside the aircraft. Escape slides can inflate in five to 10 seconds and can present a hazard to firefighters. On some aircraft, doors with armed slides have red bands across their windows. Stay aft of doors with slides and be aware of deploying slides. Slides can injure evacuees. Communicate with the pilot to avoid unnecessary evacuation. Secure slides and assist evacuees. There are normally one or two overwing exit hatches on each side. Push hatches open and pull them out of the way. Some newer aircraft have hinged overwing hatches. Keep one hand on these hatches when opening to avoid being hit by the door. Overwing hatches generally lack evacuation slides. Do not place ladders onto movable control surfaces. Some narrow body aircraft have rear air stairs or a tail cone that can be jettisoned to deploy an evacuation slide. Controls for air stairs or tail cone are located in the interior and exterior. You may be able to jettison tail cones when the aircraft is on its wheels or belly. Flight decks and passenger compartments can often be accessed through floor hatches located above avionic compartments, accessed through the bottom of the aircraft. The cockpit escape window allows escape and exterior access many open from the inside. Some can be opened from the exterior by reaching through an access panel or breaking the window. An escape rope or lowering device is usually available. Wide-body aircraft doors have complicated operating procedures, opening by toggle switches, lift tabs, or push-in panels. Almost all wide-body aircraft have overwing escape doors instead of hatches. Most doors include a double-wide escape slide that can be activated and deactivated from the exterior. Firefighters should be trained in the identification of flight data recorders and cockpit voice recorders. These items are of vital importance to accident investigations. As a general rule, they are located in the tail of the aircraft. Some older spherical recorders are painted bright yellow, but the industry standard is now rectangular recorders that are painted bright red or international orange. If found detached from the aircraft, carefully note the location and do not disturb them. Each recorder is also equipped with an underwater locator beacon, commonly known as a pinger.